Okay, we have a couple of more things left in the 10 to 100 kilogram category, but as you know by now, uh, the things that are in each category don't intuitively make sense, right? So leg of lamb here, cement over there, steel somewhere else. So just kind of listen to the uh, ideas and relative numbers and then uh, if you have to make big decisions on any one particular thing like buying a leg of lamp or building a house uh, then you uh, go back and listen a bit more carefully I suppose. <coughs> so now we move to uh, using a cellular phone which you think would be uh, somewhere else but it is in this category of 10 to 100 kilograms. Why? Because 47 kilograms uh, of uh, CO2 equivalent uh, is what is uh, occurring a, uh, for a year's typical us usage of just under two minutes per day. Just two minutes per day is going to add up to 47 kilograms CO2 equivalent. If it'll jump to a whopping 1250 kilograms uh, if you are using it uh, an hour per day, and you can imagine all the. Uh, communications that go on and people who love to spend time on the phone. Uh, one hour doesn't seem that far off. Uh, 125 million tons of CO2 equivalent is what occurs uh, because of cell phone usage per year globally. So that's many million cars running around uh, all the time. A minute cell to cell phone chatter comes in at 57 grams, uh, about the same as an apple. The 10 here is a reference number which I keep delete forgetting to delete because I copy the text from the book. Uh, same as an apple, most of a banana or a very large gulp of beer. Three minutes uh, have a similar impact to sending a small letter written on recycled paper by regular post which we looked at before. Okay, so obviously you make many more calls than uh, writing letters but if you look at uh, the 47 kg annual f uh, carbon footprint of mobile usage based on a Nokia N7600 phone used for two minutes per day and replaced after two years which is the average time that uh, user keeps uh, the phone. There are lots of issues associated with the externalities of replacing the phone so regularly especially if the companies are changing the uh, power connection type and the uh, the power charger and so on and so forth and you are buying uh, maybe a battery pack etc 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 okay base station emissions uh, are 23.1 uh, kilograms uh, switchboard emissions administration emissions manufacturing transport before sale and phone energy so you see that manufacturing in the end ends up being a small amount because of the usage and the emissions that happen uh, with constant charging and usage along the way this story of course is complicated some extreme views would say that smartphones are burning up the planet well uh, one has to be a bit more uh, moderate about it I suppose I'm generally not a fan of such graphic alarmist messages uh, but we can look at a minute on the internet in 2019 estimated data created on the internet in one minute so I'm moving a little bit away from cell phones and looking at generally how cell phones are used these days for uh, taking uh, classes online for messaging uh, so calls may be the least of uh, the problems so we are doing Facebook we are doing vi uh, video watching, uh, taking lots of photos and the cameras are getting so much uh, uh, better than many of the uh, regular cameras so some predictions are that things like SLRs will disappear in a few years because of the good uh, cameras on the phones. Uh, so this is some swipe of a Tinder or so. Uh, Instagram, uh, Netflix, uh, emails, messages, apps. Uh, so you can look at the uh, number of dollars spent here as well. Uh, shopping, uh, gifts served people on Twitter, uh, views. Uh, I think this is uh, Instagram uh, scrolls here. So posts versus scrolls and uh, Google search requests. 
Uh, there is other side of the story as well. So if you just want to compare uh, emails, uh, spam email costs you 0.3 grams CO2, regular mail is 4 grams, uh, so it's much higher as we have seen. Email with a photo is going to cost you 50 grams CO2. So for a country like India, where uh, things like WhatsApp uh, have a massive billion people uh, groups uh, or billions of people using WhatsApp, sending lots of good morning messages with uh, f images attached. Obviously, those kinds of things can be easily uh, reduced. But the other side of the story is that um, modern life is supposed to have become much more lonely, nuclear uh, families, fewer people in each family, and people mostly uh, living alone or feeling alone, I suppose. Uh, lonely is different than alone, I would say. Anyways, so if you look at the uh, various social media and cell phone connections, minutes per day, and support motivations, this study basically looked at online bonding, group identity, and quality of relations, and uh, significant and non-significant relations uh, in terms of uh, loneliness, social competence, self-esteem, and psychological well-being. And the headline is that uh, being on social groups can help deal with uh, these kinds of things, loneliness, social com competence, self-esteem. Somehow psychological well-being doesn't seem to have any um, solid positive relations, so you have to be careful. So such externalities cannot be included when we just focus on carbon footprint. So anything that is good, like cell phone, which makes life so much more convenient, can be used uh, to do things that are not environmentally very uh, friendly. Okay, that's life. Plus, there is also the danger of texting while driving or texting while crossing the street and so on and so forth. Okay, finally in this section, being cremated. 80 kilograms CO2 equivalent. That's less than one ten thousandth of uh, your life's carbon footprint. So, end of the life decisions like this, people write living wills and the people have very specific uh, ideas about whether they want to be buried or cremated. Some people want to be disposed of uh, in the ocean, which is uh, typically not legally allowed, and it's not clear whether the carbon footprint of that will be less or more. There are cultures which leave the bodies up on the mountain for the vultures to be uh, feasting on your dead body uh, and so on. But these are personal decisions. Just in terms of carbon footprint, you can get numbers. So fuel usage by crematories. Uh, here is a crematory that is using uh, more than 2 million BTUs for one cremation on average. Uh, a home, 90 million BTUs annually, which is 38 cremations. That's So cremation here is not that environmentally friendly. Annual, 38 uh, times the annual uh, BTUs. That's not very friendly. SUV, one gallon of gasoline uh, is 120,286 uh, BTUs. An SUV typically has a 26 gallon tank so you can compare crema uh, cremation versus these other things. The analogy is one cremation is powering a 2,000 square foot home for seven days. Uh, 20 gallons of gas, not even one tank of an uh, SUV. Okay, there you go. Natural gas is measured in cubic feet, gasoline in gallons, electricity in watts. For this analogy, uh, three different power sources are converted to British thermal units. In other words, um, in India, many cultures will cremate. It will be uh, s uh, sacrilege to suggest anything else for certain uh, religions. Uh, and burial is opted for in other religions and so on. So there are cultural issues involved as well. Bringing about such a big uh, change is not easy. Uh, unless you leave a living will and the relatives follow your will uh, when you are gone. 
so another way to look at it, cremation versus burial emissions. Cremation, material manufacturing, transportation and waste uh, is uh, equivalent to 27.8 coffins. Transfer, uh, gas, metals, reagents, pollutants and uh, in mobilization, cremation costs uh, 202.4, material manufacturing and uh, uh, transportation of the urn uh, at 2.5. <laughs> destination, okay, you can choose uh, some fancy destination for your ashes to be dispersed. So you're, let's say, going to end up with 233 kilogram CO2 uh, equivalent. If you do burial, uh, material manufacturing, transportation waste, transportation, uh, underground niche, uh, pantheon and so on, uh, uh, ossuary cremation, you can bring it to 833 kg CO2 equivalent. So here, uh, cremation looks much better than burial and there are many places where people are running out of uh, places uh, uh, for burial and buying a piece of land for burial can cost you a bundle. People do do that and there are companies which will sell you and they are provide very graphic emotional messages of how much it will cost your relatives if you don't plan properly for your debt. Ooh, that is a business model, right? So anyways, this is the th set of things in this uh, range of 10 to 100 kilograms. Now we will move uh, for into categories greater than 100 kilogram to one ton. I'll just go through the book and you can use the podcast as you wish uh, when you make decisions. Okay?